Hello and welcome to Real Hi-Fi Help. This is about eliminating variables in audio. So, let me just quickly give you an uh, analogy of what I mean. We have here a golf swing. This is the old type of golf swing. Notice that how much he moves his fingers, his forearms, the club, um, the body. Notice that <clears throat> when he takes the club back, it's going to do a lot of rotating. See, manually rotating here with the arms and the clubs and all of that see it's pointing here at this point here it's already all the way behind him and rotating everything's kind of doing its own thing by itself and you know these are a lot of factors on top of the extra normal uh, swing that we all should be doing according to the standard of swinging golf so he takes it off the ball very very long see swings it way past parallel we've got a bent arm there that's an extra variable we've got um, a cupped wrist here and you know if we take it back to where we were to start with you know we let's just look at his grip you know that's a strong grip and so that means that it's it's going to encourage all of this stuff happening you know but where we're here this is what's happening and of course you know being overweight also is an extra uh, variable you know um <clears throat> and it all you know this all of this can can work to some degree you know it's a nice old-fashioned feely type of way of doing stuff but it is flawed it's going to create an inconsistent sound so to some degree even though all of this is natural it will to some degree work very well just not very consistently over a long period of time also here you know a lot of just at impact and after there there's just a lot of twisting of, of everything going on here you know so i just wanted to show you guys that and just compare it with this new guy here bryson de champo he's basically the the new winning guy in golf who just hits it so far so straight and what he basically does is i'm going to show you in these couple of angles here um he's eliminated so many variables um which is quite revolutionary in, in golf so he's got a thicker grip he stands further from the ball so everything that, that he does as a movement happens as one so everything's kind of locked into place and yeah it's more mechanical not so natural but notice that it's more straight back it's more together it's more simple and also he doesn't restrict his leg movement by keeping it here it all kind of <clears throat> moves together as one yeah he crosses the line a bit so that, that that's actually um, not uh, too bad but just everything moves together as one doing the same thing and then he keeps himself <laughs> again together as one so that all of the arm rotation all of the uh, um, what's it called the wrist movement is kind of locked into place with the body and <clears throat> notice here that when he turns here he actually moves his leg as one instead of resisting and creating all of this against that Again, that, that's a variable that he has uh, reduced. See? At the end here, this leg here is not firmly in place. It's kind of moving together with all of this stuff as one. Just to make sure that this doesn't fight against the rest of the body. And that's, um, <clears throat> that, that's a remarkable um, thing that, that he's been able to do with his golf swing, you know. Um, we've got a bit of the same stuff going on here. And now we're going to see it from a different angle. So usually you would have a lot of pressure around the knee here, keeping it, it firmly posted up against the side. But what he is doing here is he's eliminating that factor by making everything kind of go with the body just kind of pushing it out of the way so all of this is like one movement see 
that that's so um rare that that type of movement you know and also notice you know he hasn't turned his overarms uh, a lot here they're basically just like doing one flat turning motion through the ball also this here it doesn't add to the shot it just kind of flat turns with everything i just found that uh amazing that uh, that detail just wanted to show you to kind of you know <clears throat> prepare you guys for this uh this this small text that i've got here so what i I think that we could learn a lot from from those golf swings, meaning that um, instead of we just constantly adding stuff, you know, putting this gimmicky thing on top of that, uh, having mono blocks together with a preamp that is a different brand that uses a different cable that uses a different speaker cable that uses a different um, uh, power supply, and you know. That's basically what I'm just trying to say with this video is that less is is more, you know. Um, if you if you just generally go after using an integrated amp instead of mono blocks with a power amp, and then on top of that have the integrated DAC in that integrated um, amp, what that means is that your what that means is that if we have a level system of one to ten where one is is the worst and ten is the best you can get away with having a DAC that's only uh, five out of ten whereas when you have it outside of the amp it then has to couple with the uh, the amplifier you know that means that you immediately have to have a DAC that is usually um, a higher class DAC, meaning that you will have to pay more for, for getting that sound integrated. So it doesn't matter that it it's so fancy and it's R2R and it, it costs so much money and stuff like that. It might be a very good DAC, but a lot of people just don't realize that as soon as you're able to find a pretty good integrated amp, that is reasonably strong and like a like a reputable uh, brand and as long as it's it's pretty good quality and like pretty beefy if it on top of that also has a, a pretty decent DAC you just you can save so much money on uh, not buying these 10 20 50 100 thousand uh, dollar DAX don't don't get me wrong those DAX can still do a lot of stuff that's really really good and it's also very difficult to find an integrated amp that has a a good integrated DAC but when it finally is possible when you can reduce those variables everything can just get on to a whole other level so on top of that you want a short uh, a signal as possible that's basically what we're doing here um, all solutions should solve a problem at the root instead of adding elements here and there or compensation all the metals cables plugs capacitors resistors transformers should have the same or very similar sound priority that's like a very basic thing that we're still not to this day doing you know a lot of brands are just using outside transformers, outside toroidal transformers or whatever they're called, from some kind of China company. And then they're incorporating it with some resistors that they got off shelf with some caps that they got from totally different brand, which is then silver, where all of this other stuff is probably uh, copper in, in a lower grade, you know. And, and you can make a lot of sounds, in, you know, give a lot of different views on how a sound is supposed to be but you're never really going to get deep into a sound when you do all of these things you know you only you're just going to make you know sound different you know give, give it a different spin somehow different angle uh, this is faster than that it has more slam it does this with the semblance there's a bit more timber and decay here you know it just becomes elements of detail instead of one so that's basically what, what we want to do, you know. We want to make everything function 
as one so we get deep into the sound and yeah to some degree that will feel like you sometimes giving up certain parts of the detail because you're not getting that you know that that leading edge that 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 fast dry sound you know that really tight bass but if you stick to the plan if you keep it simple um but still make sure that you, you're getting a, a decent class of for example integrated amp with an integrated DAC that's also a decent class you can create an environment where uh, compared to this other normal choice where when you're buying monoblocks and power amps you're usually mixing brands not always but but that creates a, a whole other set of, of problems you know making detail kind of um, merge come together uh, as one and then on top of that you're going to hear the the signal cable the power cable and all kinds of other things you know and people just need to understand that uh, more power usually means uh, less finesse less uh, integration less balance so you're basically going to be dramatizing macro dynamics in a certain angle doing a certain thing instead of going the opposite way having it integrate and then um, when you've got this this good piece of gear that is it could be like an audio note um, cobra amp you know we have a good amp and you have a, a decent DAC at least when you start off with something like that then it kind of gives you the freedom to elevate the sound whereas when you're isolating things and mixing brands and and making all kinds of different sounds come together it's just so much more difficult it can be done but you're going to use so much time and so much money on doing that uh, most likely there are exceptions to the rule like i said with the bob carver 180 monoblocks and the audio not m3 preamp i've heard those as one of the few exceptions to the rule but just take any random monoblock from any random transistor brand and then couple it with any random um uh, oh i was about to say preamp here um Instead of any random monoblock and preamp, you know, you, you're most likely going to be better off getting something like a Macintosh MA8000 or 9000, or like I said, the, the um, Audio Note um, Cobra amp with, with the, with the built-in DAC. As soon as you have that built-in DAC, I don't, I don't care if, if it's a, a hundred or a thousand dollar DAC or only a couple of thousand dollar DAC, that DAC can easily outperform a DAC that costs three, five, ten times more. It can do that, but you just have to make sure that the 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 integrated app that has this DAC has the really good conditions for for you doing that. You know, I, I've heard it at my friend's place, and I've also heard it a couple of other places uh, once in a while. But like that's that's what you kind of have to take away from this video. Um, and and yeah. Also have to mention the fact that sometimes you have to do the opposite, isolate a piece of gear, light, and that means that you're actually going to be adding variables, okay? Because you're adding an LPSU to a streamer with an external reclogger box instead of just using a regular PC, you know? That's because you want to isolate a piece of gear. Then you do that in a high quality way by making sure it's the same religion of sound with, it, with as short a signal as possible. And, you know, you got to make sure that it's um, decent uh, quality. But as soon as you start, you know, getting into these um, sort of gimmicky ways of thinking where you've got some kind of USB DAC or all kinds of power cleaning devices that only cost $50, $100, $300, uh, $500, you have to understand that one of the reasons why paying a lot of money for stuff works is because it's 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 a fantastic way intelligent way of suppressing um uh, distortion from from happening in in a very good way so 
that it's uh, being done at a very um, uh, high level way whereas when you're trying to solve problems at a lower level by using all of these devices that have cheap filters usually what they do is that yes they solve problems but they solve them at such a low level that usually they solve problems by making sound dead making it boring making it very linear making it very flat you're just hearing data you're not hearing music many times with these solutions of course there are exceptions to the rule but you you get what it is that i'm trying to say so um yeah that's uh that's all that i wanted to to cover in this video i hope you uh you liked it have a nice day